85% of these infertile cases can be preventable because it's related to untreated sexual diseases, transmitted diseases, STDs, untreated STDs. The, the infection uh, resulted from uh, genital mutation, child marriage, unsafe abortion, unsafe delivery, and all these things we are advocating for, uh, advocating for, for it every day can cause infertility, and it causes infertility. From a clinical point of view, we have encouraged doctors to make two diagnoses. One is the clinical diagnosis. The other is the social and psychological diagnosis of infertility. So that both run concurrently and both are treated in the doctor's surgery and in associated uh, services. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Mark started this journey in Africa mid uh, last year. We started in Kenya. And it's a great initiative that has opened ways and doors for discussion. Because infertility in Africa um, is like a taboo, it's like a curse. Nobody speaks about it. It's always spoken in harsh tones. You don't find people coming out to talk about it in open. And as a result, uh, women suffer in silence. They don't have anybody to talk to because when you talk to somebody about your problem, they start looking down upon you as a woman, that what kind of a woman are you that you can't bear a child? And also the pressure from the family, the pressure from the society, make these women go into depression, which is not easy. So the campaign that Mark is sponsoring across the continent is such a relief to all the African women um, and also men, because infertility is not just a woman problem as it's you know, looks outside there. We have pushed for IVF bill. Now we, we've changed from IVF. It's been called assisted reproductive uh, bill so that now we can accommodate all other methods apart from, from just IVF. It's a, it was a radical um, bill, but we thank God that we passed it just last week. And we are, thank you. Do we are lucky as Malawi government, as a Malawi nation, our president is the champion for reproduction health. And in that way, we are really uh, gearing a number of programs. Even the women, the girls themselves, to know their status while they're young before they go into marriages. And it is at a village level, it is at a, a local level. And we meet also with the pro women professionals just to encourage them that they've got to stand the heat. What we are trying to do in Liberia is to ban early marriage. Er early marriage leads to teenage pregnancy. Teenage pregnancy leads to fistula. Fistula leads to discrimination, stigmatization, and um, fatality, infertility. These are just a few. But like my sister said from Malawi, we've always been looking at the male as our enemy. But early marriage is mostly arranged by the mothers. <laughs> FGM is performed by the mothers. It's the mothers-in-law that can wait for that grandchild. It is about time now that we as mothers do something a little different. We have the power. We have the strength. We can say to our husbands, let our child go to school. She has enough time to be a wife. A woman is more than a mother. And I think if we can look at all women in that light, we can change our behavior, we can change our culture, we can change our tradition. Who sets culture? We, the women. Tradition. It's practiced by the women. Culture and tradition can be modified. It's good that we have talked about uh, developing laws and legislation. It's very important. But it does not solve the problem unless we follow how this has, has been applied, implemented justly for everybody. First and foremost, I want to thank Mark, because it's Mark that brought this on the table. Infertility has existed over the years, 
we all know it is there. We all know the pain that the women go through, but nobody has been talking about it. And I'm glad that this campaign that we have all started, the journey that we agreed to champion in my country, will help us in bringing this out, show men that it's important right from the time you get married to move to the health facility, have yourselves checked well in time so that you don't have to wait until it is too late. The main problem is the silence. Women maintain this as a top secret that is only disclosed sometimes in our office as a doctors, and more when it's a, uh, the doctor is a, a, a woman. It's easy, but in general, it's, it's like a, the suffering is just for them without can share with anybody. My last word is we all need to break the silence and speak wherever we go. Back to our countries, back to our communities, let us break the silence and speak out about this subject matter. Thank you very much. <laughs>